Professor Ziberi. How are you doing? How's your weekend? I'm good evening. Did you say good evening? Yes, <laughs> morning. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm fine. Yes. Um, I have a birthday shout out. Oh, nice. From uh, Jenny Wosu. She says um, it was her birthday. I should love a, a shout out and prayer from the mm. ladies. Mm. It was a very day over the weekend. But how were you doing? We want to find out how you doing. How was your weekend? What did you do? Did you cook? Did you party? I wish I could have partied. It was a stressful working weekend. Oh. Uh, my daughter Work is, is good. Is on we uh, boarding classes every weekend now for. Oh, uh, the uh, Islamic class or something yes, like that. Islamic yes. classes yes. for yes. memorizing the Quran. That's and nice. when she comes, going to school on the weekend to pick her and back, it's stressful for me. Wow. I need a break mm. and because of business at all. Oh, in, you know when I was a little girl, I used to go to y Yaniwura and they wanted mm. me to recite. I ran away from that. Oh, <laughs> recite the Quran. This, this, oh, this, this is the better way to learn. I don't want yes. to recall how I learned the Quran. But uh, thanks to my mom, she yeah. was stubborn. If it wasn't for her, I would have run out just the way you did. Yeah. But my daughter, this is a, this is a school setting. Okay. This is a proper That's way nice. to learn. How are you doing, Takwe? I'm good. I have two birthday shout outs. Both I have a banter, and it is a very, very dear one to me. In recent times, I've had to drive through the Lekki Expressway um, to go to my estate in Beachwood. And on my way back, I at those Lekki third roundabouts, um, traffic lights, mm -hmm. you will see a sea of young people begging. of a certain tribe. The young, small children, like, mm -hmm. begging. They swamp your car. There are a lot yeah, of them. Like it's, like, it's a sea of young, underaged Under people yes, right. with their moms carrying another baby. You will see them just swamp your car. They are knocking. They are begging. Madam, please be nice. You are looking very fine. Some try to wash the car. And I'm like, how long will Lagos continue? Some of these children, this is 10 years. Mm. This is all they will do. Mm. And then if they don't see food to beg from you, they will become criminals. So the job of the government is to foresee potential damage. Mm. And I think they are actually them. supposed to be on the roads. There was a time they that are, they, they were taking clear them off yeah. under fashion law. Yeah. I think since after that time, we are not doing a good and job I to take them I think the governor of the state also has actually asked that everybody be cleared off the road. But I think it's not been implemented because I do remember there was a time that it was, well, was sent out that... Um, no, which well, is not the only road. on the uh, Lucky Express. Uh, oh, it's very across, the, it's across the state. Across the state. No, across the state, but it's terrible on the last week Sherry Road because you well. get stuck there. Mm. And you know, last week Sherry, that go, that's the only road. So the traffic there in the evening during closing mm. hours is terrible. Mm. Robbery happens. I have 82 year birthday shout out. I'm sorry, Mrs. Folake Ajayi. She's a huge fan of our show. She clocked 82 years Happy old birthday. yesterday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mrs. Folake Ajayi. Ajayi. Okay, yeah, how are you so doing? I'm doing amazing. I have a birthday mm -hmm. shout out. It was actually, I was supposed to take this on Friday, but I forgot. Mrs. Franca Chiazo Maido was her birthday. She's a huge fan of your view. Her daughter was my classmate in secondary yeah. school. So happy oh, birthday, wow. ma. Happy birthday, ma. And um, yeah, I've, um, I have a, a couple of new projects I'm working on, yeah. um, which are, I've been, I'm going to be very busy. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm Aww. going to be very busy this week. So I, I don't even know how I'm going to divide myself, but. Hopefully, I'll be able to <laughs> pull through. Yeah. How you doing? I'm how fine. Your weekend? I'm I don't know how your weekend was. was. I'm, sorry, I'm, looking for, I'm looking for birthday shout out. Right? I never got a shout out. My weekend was. Uh -huh. hey, well, well, you went to the hotel. Was my oh, did you not do that live? You promised you were going to do that. Brown did refuse to do live. God bless Brown. You're not supposed to be doing live on that day. You've been holding something. Leola. Leola Hotel Nikeja. They were so nice. GM was so kind. He gave my little boy gifts. You know, they, they were just so happy. They loved mm. the show. And they sent their greetings to you hey guys. Aww. You know, the lady Lily at the... Uh, but you had the, fun, the, the right? Fun was nice. We slept. We had you talk you time. Test, yeah, I read just... You, my, yeah. my Friday afternoon, after my, my Friday midday, and midday, my test was already done. Okay. And we had That's some fun. Yeah, it was, it was nice. It was nice. It's just good to have time. Yeah, time off. But I didn't know. We still brought the children. Ah, we had to go. Guys... Yeah, just like we hung out with them. They're not together because you know, yeah, it's not easy. I see. I All right, let's go on a break. When we come back, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, we're going to start with the we're going to start with the nation. Are we back? Yeah, we're yeah. back. Yeah. All right. Um, witness, we saw Air Force plane go down, then explode. 
police to arraign Okocha for breaking into sealed property. Kagara people's others freed. 30% duty waiver on mass transit vehicles begins. Central Bank to inject 118 back 18 billionaire into discos. Okay, which story? Are we? Let's start with the 30% waiver. Yes, so uh, according to the customs, the federal government has issued a 30 percent waiver for importation of <coughs> vehicle parts, including aircraft parts. And this is, of course, to help us, you know, on our econ economic recovery parts that we are, part that we have you know, embarked on now to boost the economy and help operators in these sectors quickly catch up. Okay, so um, the CBN, Central Bank of Nigeria, um, has said that they will be disbursing $118 billion for power distribution projects across the six uh, geopolitical zones. Uh, they have said that this will help the operators include, um, add about 2,000 megawatts to power supply. Uh, they also talked about the fact that they are the ones uh, responsible for giving out the six million uh, prepaid meters across the country. They have rolled out about uh, 500,000 already, and they are hoping that between 12 to 15 months, they would have given out the um, 6 million meters to Nigeria so that those who really want prepaid meters can get prepaid meters. Hopefully, mm. we'll have, you know, more power mm. Mm -hmm. right. distributed to us. So, the former governor of Imo State was arrested by the police. Mm. Um, he had gone into the property, his wife's property, property that was sealed by the security operatives and... Um, he, he, knew he wasn't authorized to be there anyway, so mm. uh, the police were called and he was seized and he was pulled up in the Siena van, taken to the, in, in their custody. As at 10 p.m. where the report was being filed, he was still in their custody. We don't know his condition as of this so morning, but they're going to be arraigned this morning to court. So we'll see how We're that told goes. he went there with talks, according to the reports mm, that yes, we had. And yes, there were so confrontations, all the vehicles yes. that he took. The bus he arrived in were, were you know, uh, vandalized broken, smash, and all of that. So. Okay, let's move on quickly to the punch. Abuja plane crash residents can count, recount near-death experience. Guard electrocuted while plucking purple in Lagos. Over 35,700 publicans begin exams for over 4,700 Quara teaching slots. Inadequate polling units may affect 2023 elections, says INEC. Controversy surrounds uh, Niger students' workers released abducted travelers freed. And uh, beware of APC members dancing on Ige's grave, says Arek Beshola. All right, which story are we taking? The human interest story quickly. Yes, so a 56-year-old Uchenna Harrison was electric, uh, electrocuted when he uh, attempted to you know, climb a tree and get purple. So he's a security guard who was working and then he got hungry <clears throat> and he didn't tell his colleagues, just stepped uh, to the next compound where he had to, you know, climb the tree to get the purple. But he used an, an iron rod, according to the story, and, but there was a wire, there was a naked wire that, mm. you know, passed through, the tree. passed through the tree and when he touched that, he was electrocuted. Oh, threw Lord. him to different directions with a ladder and all of that, according to the report. So investigations are ongoing. Uh, Nima was actually telling us a background story. Because uh, it was close to my her area. Community. So mm. I called 767 because of the body. Mm. The body, we discovered it around 11. Mm. Oh. I called 767 by 9 a.m. in the morning. I called back by 2 p.m. in the afternoon. They still had not picked the body. Wow. And there was this grumpy young lady on the um, phone. Online. Have called CMO. I've called, I had to find CMO because I'd made such a call in the mm. past, you know, to and if, if the former CMO's number I had said he's resigned from the service. So you know, I, just, I was just frustrated as to the person. Mm. You would expect a bit of you. action. Mm. We're in a mm. pandemic. I kept saying, sir, we don't know the cause of death. Exactly. At the time, I didn't know the cause of death, but you know, she did not mm. have the zeal. Not encouraging at all. This He's plane crashed. Crash. Okay, go ahead. Because um, the Professor Mahmoud Yaqub had been speaking concerning the importance of reforming the, um, for us to have a free and fair election 2023, we need to do some electoral reforms and sign them into law. One of the things he's clamored for, and he mentioned again during the National Economic um, um, 
Council in Abuja was that the lack of polling units would disenfranchise millions of Nigeria, that the current status quo of 119,973 polling units isn't enough, and that they need to expand the number of polling units, and it needs to be done fast, that the Section 42 of the Electoral Act to create polling units should be adjusted. And I really want the National Assembly to work on this because mm. it is important. The plane crash, we didn't talk about that. So yeah. Unfortunately, reports have that young, seven young, gallant yeah. officers had crashed in the in Abuja yesterday morning about 11 a.m. It was such a painful situation, and our hearts go out to their families. We're still, um, obviously, this is a military plane, so we'll be waiting for an official report exactly on cause of the crash. But for now, may their souls rest in peace. We have the names of the young men. Yes, I have uh, Henry Payo. Pilot Flying Officer Michael Okbara, Airborne Tactical Observation System, Warrant Officer Basi Etim, Flight Sergeant Olasukomi Olawumi, Sergeant Ugochuku Oloka, and Aircraftsman Adewale Johnson. May your souls rest in peace. Amen. Moving on now to Daily Sun. Allah Fin Task Yoruba on restructuring. I have that story. Relief as abducted Kagara students rejoined parents. Ex Imo Governor of Okorocha arrested. We talked about that already. Traders reject plans to concession Lagos International Trade Fair. Okay, so I think I'm doing something today. <laughs> um, let me start with Alafi. Alafi okay. was saying that um, the issue of insecurity and restructuring that we are demanding um, reminds him of what happened in 1967, where Yoruba leaders across different political parties sank their political differences and met in, in Ibadan um, under the governorship of General Adi Yinka Debayo. And on that occasion, Yoruba unanimously chose um, the sage chief Obafemi Awolo not only as a leader but as the authorized spokesperson for the Yoruba and it was a successful uh, uh, um, um, leadership at the time. So the point he was trying to make is that Destruction is the only thing, and Yoruba, the entire Southwest leaders are speaking with one voice, mm. and it's so important for us to be very clear on what we want at this at this time, and also reminding that we need to have a deliberate action from the government on the issue of destruction. All our leaders, especially those in the National Assembly, must take this as a as a national call mm. to ensure and insist. And on, on restructuring for the entire it was nation. So good to see it. It, was, it was really good to that see meeting. that yeah. meeting, the yeah. show of unity, yeah. important. So we had some good news over the weekend as okay. well, apart from Please. the crash. The children abducted in Kagara were wow. released. 27 so of them, the two um, of their teachers and 12 family members. And the 39 bus, um, what, uh, the, the, transit, kidnapping. the transit bus yeah. kidnapping, passengers of that bus too were in, uh, released. And the son was saying that, you know, a key member of negotiator of this uh, for negotiating of the release of these people was Shegumi. Again, I, I, I think so. We, it seems like we found a way to yes. To, these bandits have found a way to monetize their business, serious and then we business. have a negotiator that ensures that this the business transaction is very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, but so I'm happy we for had, all those that have because reports that, that money wasn't that money didn't transfer. Yes, transfer, they said money didn't that transfer. That it was actually in exchange for um, um, bandits being arrested. Been arrested. Yeah, but Shegumi was reported to, according to the son as having been to the hideout of the bandits yes. and also spoke with the governor um, as well as called on the president for certain re reprieve for them. Mm. Uh, Please, I want to take a story there. Okay. Um, the Honor Haneze Indigo has said that justice and equity is critical to the enthronement of peace in Nigeria. Mm. And they said key to this is the fact that the 2023 presidency should be ceded to the South East. East. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, let's find a story we've not taken. Shasha. Foodstuff cattle dealers demand for 75 billion naira compensation. Hmm. 21 hmm. abducted Niger uh, passengers set free. Uh, federalism remains Niger's only hope, says Tokumba Wolo Odosumu. And Mayhem in Imo as a coach arrested food, over alleged. Food yes. For me. Food. Shasha. The Amalgamated Union of Foodstuff and Cattle Dealers of Nigeria Association and the Northern Consensus Movement said on Sunday that they lost many of their members. They, they, according to this report, they talked about the initial attack and they talked about how people continue to attack their members because in their in the business, they call it an economic business of transiting foods from certain areas of the country to other areas. And mm. they, they, they've called on the security agents. They mentioned, they decried the, their constant attack of their people in the face of any uh, issue within the country because, they, you know, they call, decried the attack on them during the hashtag against us. And now, they decry what happened in Sasha, saying that they've lost so much lives and properties mm. that 18 of their trucks mm. were attacked in Sasha mm. during that uh, uh, issue that happened. Yes. In, and 
they are asking the federal government for quickening compensation. money compensation yes. to help them <laughs> to balance. Okay, money. let me take this paper for the, this story from Trade Fair. Um, mm -hmm. Core investors reject concession plan for Lagos Trade Fair. So they are saying that the Bureau of um, Public Enterprise had issued a statement that fe by February 2021, this month, that they're going to um, put up, showcase the investment opportunities in Lagos Trade Fair. And I think we are Uncle Way too. We are 61 investors already at Trade Fair, mm -hmm. and we have a 45 year lease. So, which part of Trade Fair exactly do you want to put out for concession? That mm -hmm. we are still here, and um, that the only about 20 or 25 percent of the Trade Fair is available for investment. If you if you do seem you want to do that, but for now, they, they are quite worried yeah, that, about, about this. Um, in our business policies. Uh, yes. These statements being made. By there's the a valid contract that should be made. Okay, to Vanguard. Our final mm -hmm. paper for this morning, very quickly. Bandits kill fathers, son, uh, four others in connect yes. communities. No. Um, expect. Hmm. 195 naira per hmm. liter for petrol marketers won. Hmm. And privatization of inf refineries, national assets must be transparent, Article tells federal governments. Yes, yeah, in Kaduna <laughs> State, um, uh, bandits um, attacked and killed about six persons. They went to different um, villages mm. in the area and they killed the father, killed the son, oh. injured the son, injured the father in pocket. So, but investigations have been carried out and they realized that uh, some youths in the village had aided the bandits. Mm. So oh. those youths found that particular person who aided the bandits and went to a reprisal attack and killed him. Mm. Before he died, he confessed and called out some other people. So investigations are ongoing. It's right. very unfortunate mm. that we have young people who are aiding these bandits, who know mm. where they are hiding, mm. and they are supporting them to carry out this mm. mayhem. We need to start fishing out those people because right. they are compromising everybody. Unfortunately, so, you have to run off. I just want to quickly brush yeah. up this major headline. Yeah. I think we need to discuss it. So Ipman, that's the independent, independent petroleum uh, manager, um, Ipma yes. is saying that we should expect to start buying for like 195 naira per liter. And some filling stations are already selling above 170 naira per liter. Mm. But according to the uh, guy for NNPC, one Ken Yobatero, I think he's the group general manager, group public, whatever, in NNPC, he's saying that yeah, that's not true. They have not increased mm. their ex-depot price. And they don't have any plans to increase it in February. February. February is just one week more, sir. Okay, all right. Please stop delaying the inevitable. That's inevitable. all Let's we can take on front page review. <laughs> when we come back, we move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So, last Wednesday, the Executive Council of the Nigeria Labour Congress directed workers in states that are yet to be paid their 30,000 naira minimum wage to immediately proceed on strike. The communique is coming after uh, three, 676 days, the president had already signed the minimum wage bill into law. Joining us on the show right now is the national president of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba. Welcome to the show, sir. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me on this breakfast show. Yes, sir. So, according to your communique last uh, Wednesday, you signed the communique saying that um, the refusal of the governors to pay um, this new minimum wage is an act of criminality, betrayal, and uh, betrayal of the oath of office. Now, my question, therefore, is do you think, actually, it's a refusal or simply that they can't afford to pay at this time? And I'm talking about the, um, the 18 states that have refused to pay, that they have not paid. It is one of them, I think, Quara and a few others. So in your, in, in my, in, in, in your view... Is it that they are refusing or they simply do not have the economic capability to make these payments? Well, thank you very much. From the data we have, states that have implemented the minimum wage at first instance are states even with, with less revenue. So it's about their priorities. And I can go to tell you some of those states. Some without even negotiating because they said a worker deserves a fair wage. And they went ahead to implement without negotiation and uh, also without the hula balloon that have uh, been the whole trademark of minimum wage. Minimum wage law 2019 uh, was a tripartite consultation process. The governors were represented by six of their members. And let me also say that the minimum wage law operates in 90% of the countries around the world. Some are hourly, some are daily, and some are monthly. That of Nigeria is monthly, which we adopted since 1981. And uh, this is about setting a minimum benchmark, both for 
workers in the private sector, and workers in the public sector. So basically, what is even 30,000 in the context of the current challenge in our economy? So I think it's about the will to do what is right, because some that earn very little have paid, and some that earn even higher have not been able to pay. Uh, those categories are into three, because in most cases, we just seem to lump everybody under the same non-payment. Some have fully implemented, some partial implementation, right. and some no implementation at all. So these are the categories that we have, because some have actually gone ahead to implement. Possibly what is outstanding is the consequential adjustment, because right. if you increase that of level one, then other grade levels also will uh, have the effect. Right. Uh, so basically, those are the issues. We are okay. talking today when the inflation rate is over and above 16%. It means even the gain of the current minimum wage has been eroded. Yeah. And this is a constitutional matter. In fact, the law said after every five years, the minimum wage will review, knowing fully well that with inflation, the purchasing power of Nigerian workers and pensioners will have been eroded. Mm -hmm. And also, don't forget the issue of pensioners, because the Constitution also said any time the minimum wage is reviewed, you need to also review the pension uh, or five years review or when the minimum is removed, any of them that uh, come first. So these are the issues that are right. on the table. Okay, so basically, we must be innovative to find right. ways and means. Right. As we talk today, many countries are promising even to review their minimum wage in the mix of this challenge. Right. U.S. president is one of them. So uh, I think it's about the willpower, not about essentially okay. resources. If right. it's about resources, put it on the table. That's why it's a process of collective bargaining. What we did with government was a process of collective bargaining. We demanded 66,000, looking at all the empirical data pointing to the performance of our economy and the purchasing power and how we have lost those purchasing power. So it was a negotiated, and the same is expected of states. States are not paying the same wage. Right. Get me very right. They have gone to negotiate, and if you think you don't have the resources, put it on the table. Let us have a discussion. And that's why ILO said social dialogue to address industrial relation issues. Don't shave our head in our absence. Okay. Say, I don't have money. Whereas we know what comes in. We know what is security vote. We know... Uh, the white elephant project <laughs> that people are building that doesn't have direct gearing right. with the life of citizens. So All right, let me, let me get a few more questions in for you. Let me get a few more questions in for you. Go ahead. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy that you, where you, the conversation was going to because um, I wanted to clarify. I know that the, everybody knows that the economy hasn't been good the past few years. Um, the resources COVID. that should have gone to the governors have, de have reduced from pump price to the pandemic and that economy went into recession. So I, I, I want you to, you, you, you've been talking from a, a, pla a place of, you know they, they should have the political will to do it. But you just came into White Elephant Project that are taking the monies that should have gone into public wages. So now, um, um, sir, I would like you to engage with specifics so that we are not just talking emotions and talking expectations, but we mention states that we believe should be able to afford it and what you think, what, based on what you know they earn and how much they are committed to prayer that you feel are non-convertible um, or impactful on the lives of their citizens so that we, people can get pure facts and figures and numbers. Well, thank you very much. As I said, at arriving at the... 30,000 minimum wage, it was a process of social dialogue. We are all the parties, organized private sector, the governor's forum, the federal government, employers' organization, and organized labor met on the table for over six months to look at the various variables, including, including economic indices, before arriving at the 30,000 minimum wage. You remember also, when we are discussing the issue of the consequential adjustment with the federal government, in fact, Almost all the states said they were waiting for the federal government to conclude the consequential adjustment. Go through your record, you'll get all of this, and Nigerians will not forget. They said once the consequential adjustment uh, is concluded with the federal government, they will go ahead to implement, and they will discuss with their workers. This is the premise for which we are making this submission. Don't also forget, this is not the first time that we have implemented minimum wage. And this is not also the first time we are in difficulty. Let me assure you that even in the mix of recession in 2008, Obama approved a new minimum wage to the American workers. Because what stimulates the economy is actually when people are able to have a purchasing power, buying and selling. And therefore, if the economy is at a standstill, there is no uh, 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 disposable income, it then means also that you cannot be able to buy. And the reason along this line, 
And therefore, in the mix of this pandemic, in the mix of the challenge, we should be able to empower Nigerian citizens to be able to have the purchasing power that can stimulate our economy and that that can be done through the minimum wage because the impact of the minimum wage is not only for workers in the public and private sector. In fact, even artisans, you remember any time you, remove, you also review the minimum wage, they will go ahead. If per day labor is used to be 1,500, they will say, no, okay, no, it's 2,000. So it has a, a multiplier effect. Even Mama Puts that sell tomato in the market, if before it's three for 15 naira, she will say, okay, I will not sell two or I will add one. This is the whole concept of minimum wage. And therefore, if we understand it from the Women Development Index, then it will be better for us, but not to say right. we don't have money. And let me also tell you that why we have said, go and negotiate with your workers. We know that the states are not on the same pedestal <laughs> in terms of revenue that accrue to the states. Some have internal general revenue. Some depend solely on the uh, federation account. And that's why I gave you the example of states that are least on the revenue table. Borno is one of them. He's one of the first governors to implement the minimum wage. You say it's not even an achievement to be paying salary. This is where you have insurgency. This is where you know the revenue. But he said he can be able to pay. And he's one of the states that on a monthly basis, he has a reserve of two months' salary. Because he doesn't want any shock where worker salary cannot be paid. And when he receives his allocation, the first payment he makes is worker salary and pension. Hmm. This governor that is paying $12 billion to for gratuity of retirees, accumulated that he has made over 10 years. So it's about innovation. It's about people-centered approach to development. If they don't have resources, put it on the table. We have set time with that number. We are ready to do engagement. When you put your fact, we put our fact. That's why it's good to engage our states. When you engage them, the facts will be on the table because it's not an avenue here to be calling states A have this resources. No, All right. our state council have those data. And this is the way to go. That is why it's about negotiation. All right. And this has been the tradition all, right. all through history. From 1991, no employer of labor will tell you he has excess. Even banks that are posting okay. for Mungo's profit, they will tell you there is no money. But we can see that they are posting more profit. Comrade. So workers have always been at the receiving end. So let me go on a quick break, sir. Because, I mean, I could have sworn that these negotiations came about last time. But let's go on a quick break. We'll continue this conversation after the break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We still have the National President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba, with us. BC had a question before the break. Comrade Ayuba, yeah, so I'm aware that um, you've directed the 18 states that had not uh, started implementing the uh, new minimum wage to, for the workers to go on strike. And I am wondering, because this is the same um, sort of so solutions you have been given over time. So when the government doesn't do what it's needed to do, you go on strike. And then you have like a meeting, you agree, and you come back. And the next two months, we hear that there's another impending Cycle. strike. Now, is there any other method that you are thinking of adopting since this strike obviously has failed? Well, thank you very much. Don't forget that uh, strike is legal globally. Even in the best economies, workers do go on strike. Mm -hmm. You are aware that British Airways were on strike. In Brussels, the railways went on strike. Mm -hmm. In the US, teachers went on strike. So it's a matter of last resort. You can't wish away strike because the difference between a slave and a worker is that a worker can withdraw his services. Same also with the employer, there is lockout. So our laws are very rich, and this is not laws made only in Nigeria. There are international conventions and treaties of the ILO. And Nigeria is a signatory. In fact, Nigeria has domesticated most of those international conventions. So it's not something you can wish away. And it's not a tea party, even for the unions. It's a matter of law resort. If a law had been passed since 2019, and here we are after persuasion and doing everything within our means to try to get people to come to the table to discuss and negotiate, I think you must also appreciate the workers. So I think it's to understand the context of strike, right. when it is practiced or when it is deployed. Okay. It's a matter of love and so But let me also make the point. I don't know where you get this 18, uh, the number of 18, because our community is very explicit. Mm -hmm. And I think I've also categorized those that are partial implementation, full implementation, and no action at all. So I think basically is to rely on our communication, because all the states will be speaking to that issue, and they will go ahead 
to issue the necessary instruments. Please uh, mention, instruments the mention the state. Uh, and let the me also make a point that let me make the point that uh, it's not all the governors that are in the same boat. Some are pro workers. In fact, they are worker friendly, despite the little resources they have gone ahead to implement. And you remember that Kaduna and Lagos was one of them that started the implementation process, despite the fact that they have some little resources, but they went ahead to implement. But we have those that have, have among those resources. They are among the people that are dragging their feet actually to implement. So it's about priority, I said. How do you look at your workers? Do you look at them as partners in progress? Do you look at them as people that also work to earn a living? If they work to earn a living, how do you want them to survive? Take, for instance, a teacher that you will assume will still collect 18,000, even with the, uh, the, the inflation rate, which conservatively, uh, and uh, Bureau of Statistics say is about 16%, but you know that it's more than 50% when you go into real terms, when yes, you consider the cost of commodities in the market, is really above, over and above 50%. 50%. I give you right, yeah. and uh, oh, a, a bag of maize. Mm -hmm. Once you calculate what it used to be and what it is now, you know that right. you sympathize with the worker. So we must sympathize with ourselves uh, okay. to look at how best we can use innovation to uh, uh, actually uh, All right. uh, let me, address so, this issue. Let me get a few more Fundamentally, questions I think for us, it's like a matter of last resort, that's why we had to so, do all of this because persuasion, because we first believed in consultation, mm -hmm. consultation, consultation before confrontation. Mm -hmm. And therefore, right. that have been what have been deployed. Okay, let me get a few more things. questions in for uh, you, sir. Some have gone put on the warning strike, some have, have made all the persuasion, but uh, from one indication, as I said, it's not about resources. We have seen how the Paris Club reform have utilized, we have seen even how the budget support uh, was utilized, and then we have raised a lot of alarm in the past. So do you think we should just hold our arm and begin to lament? No, right. Lamentation, I think, is not uh, an issue that will address our issue. And that's the problem of Nigeria. Many people will say, where is labor? They will just hold their arms instead of what happens in other clans where people engage issues and come out to say, no, this is not something that is good. Wages right. affects everybody, not right. only workers. Okay, everybody me... would be affected by wages when they're when they paid. All mm -hmm. right. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so um, I, I'd like you to, to take into consideration the size of certain... Civil, of civil service across the country, not even certain states, of civil service across the country, and some adjustment that some governors have been forced to do. Most of this affects pensioners. In, in one state that I would not mention, the um, civil service has removed certain pensioners off their list now, after asking them to waive about 22 years uh, salaries that they've been, that they were owed, salary areas that they were owed. And, you know, some of these adjustments that they are doing now also affect your workers. So how are you going to, you know, protect these pensioners? What are you doing exactly with the governors to know the figures that come in? And maybe you do the distribution yourself so that you know exactly what, how, how many people this can cover before we in, in, in get involved in negotiations. Yes, we can do this from Abuja. In each of the states, we have our affiliates. We have also a chairman and executive of the Nigerian Labor Congress, mm -hmm. Trade Union Congress, Joint Public Service Negotiating Council in the public sector. This is their responsibility. They have the details. They know what comes in. They know what is paid out. They know the details. And in terms of actually weeding out those that are not workers or pensioners, we have always supported the process. And therefore, if there is an open process of engagement, labor will also contribute. I know of many states that have done biometrics and workers participated, and at the end of the day, the wage bill was reduced. And in most of the cases, you cannot also blame the worker. It's politicians that actually inflate the salary bill. They bring their own people, inflate the salary bill, uh, so that uh, that is also another means of corruption. In the public service. So we are for due process. We are for sanitizing the process. But pay a worker what is due to him, what the law cites. Anybody that does not implement an existing law that is backed by the constitution, is it not illegality? It's illegality. Nowhere okay. do you have such an impunity. All right, let me... Let no, where do you work without doing all of these things? So it's right. a law already. And uh, it's not only in Nigeria. I say 90% of the countries in the world right. respect the Minimum Wage Act. We are signatory to the ILO Convention. And that's why even from the first political dispensation in 1901, Shehu Shagari adopted and said, well, Nigeria cannot be behind. We should be frontally leading. And uh, when we are saying we are the biggest economy in Africa, we must also realize that uh, that was made possible because workers create the wealth of every economy. Right. And therefore, Coming it's not over. only for public service. People, people, people mistake that it's only for public service. No, it's for private sector also. It's a national benchmark. And that's why in the organized private sector, when we did that negotiation, 
the employers' organization were there. And that's why in every sector of the economy, in the private sector, they have a negotiating platform. From the food industry, to the manufacturing industry, to the hotel industry, to the construction industry, they have a negotiating platform where they will sit with their employers, negotiate, and then implement. And most of them have been doing that. So it's not only limited to the public service. That's why it's a national benchmark. So All right. that you don't have we a have to run of off. We have to run off very soon, sir. And I'd like to touch on the issue of pump price because the same communique for last week, Wednesday, demanded a downward review of the templates used in determining the pump price um, to, uh, to starve of any imminent hike in petrol price. You and I know that we've all agreed to remove subsidy. So why is Labour still insisting or um, implying that there's an increase in pump price when we are expecting that it's supposed to be due to market forces? Could you please help us clarify that? Because Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let me enlighten you and many Nigerians. Yes. The current template is based on import parity pricing method, <coughs> which predisposes that all our domestic consumption for PMS will be imported. We are the only country among the OPEC countries of the world that Sorry. adopted that policy, and that policy was imposed on us by IMF in 2003. We have proposed a new method, that is the production cost pricing method, which is what all other countries of OPEC are using. In fact, OPEC said. OPEC countries should not adopt the policy we have adopted because it's exploitative, it kills our refineries. And what we have proposed is to say that our refineries are not old, they're not aged. Because people have said they are aged, we should just privatize. No. Many countries around the world are running their refineries. Germany, for instance, has 60 refineries, they don't have oil. So what we do is that colonial mentality of producing our resources, taking it outside, refining it export the jobs, and then come back because we have the population to now begin to take. And therefore, it's like we are producing, we have said this analogy, you produce cassava on your farm. Instead of uh, removing the ones you prepare gari and eat with your family, you sell everything. And you use the same money and buy gari from outside, certainly the cost will be higher. So basically, we cannot continue in this direction. And that's why we said our first position is that the premise and the template is faulty. And it's faulty, we need to change it now. We cannot accept an imposition of a policy that has not worked for us. And therefore, that is the first position. So I think you must understand what the regulation means. The regulation means fair competition. Where you are producing, people are also bringing in if they want to bring it. It's like I'm selling electronics. What the regulator needs to do is give me a standard. I'll go and import and I can sell. And therefore, there will be fair competition. But in this case, with the uh, import uh, template, certainly uh, there is no way Nigeria will get out of And it's a vicious cycle. Part of the parameter used is the issue of inflation. Once you increase the price of this commodity, you are sure also inflation will go up. So it will be a vicious cycle. Right. And that is why it will remain a vicious <laughs> cycle. Okay. And I think what we have proposed, and I think even the private sector are coming in now, but with the refinery coming on board, you are sure that we will be able to have sir. also some level of Please let me just put this in. The sir. primary purpose of governance is okay, sir. the welfare and well being of Nigeria. Let me just so our this four refineries have a combined capacity of producing close to 500. Uh, liters per day. Right. If we are able to put it into use, and since we actually adopted this template, the refineries refuse to work because people don't want the refineries to work because it's more lucrative right. to actually import. Let me pause it for a quick second, but sir. It's at the detriment of all of us, Nigeria. Let me pause it for a quick second. Go ahead, talk okay, sir. The, the way it is, we can't put the chicken before the eggs because if what you're pushing for, which is that they, should, they shouldn't increase the pump price, would lead to us paying subsidies. And the money that we've spent on subsidies for the past few years would have given us refineries. So how can the labor effectively engage the government into focusing? Let's, don't you believe we should, the entire labor, Nigeria, some of us should bear the brunt now. And let's, let's, it's, let's, let's, let's put a timeline for refineries to come but upstream. Rather than maybe, thinking you are, that, maybe you have forgotten. Maybe you have forgotten. On this issue, Labour have engaged all successive governments. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even within the uh, uh, parameters of the current government, in the program, the issue of activating the refineries ought to be ready by 2018. It's part of the programs. It's well documented. Obasanjo promised the same. Nothing happened. Yaradua, we gave four-year moratorium. Nothing happened. So it has been a vicious cycle. And therefore, at every point in time, this we must remind our leaders of this commitment that have been made so that we can be able to change the narrative. Two things will happen. One, citizens must continue to be protected from the economic baggage of this policy option that we have chosen, which certainly will haunt most of us. 
It's about affordability. It's about also the increasing cost of living in our country. And therefore, basically, there is no time we will not engage this issue. There is no time we have engaged on the issue of hike in pump price without putting an option of what we need to do. If we had done this from the year 2000 and 2003 that I'm talking about, when this issue of uh, the import uh, parity method was used, we will have actually gotten across it. But it more beneficial to few to actually import because it can be manipulated. So this has been our argument. And therefore, at every point, we will have to look at options, including the one that citizens must be protected. Yes, I tell you that in 159 countries, there's still subsidized energy. What are you talking about? If you don't know, I can give you the details. We have a profound document, well-studied document, from the best economies in petroleum economies in the world, which we have shared with government and we are also sharing with you. So what we are saying is that those things are things that are doable. We, have short, we can have short-term plans, we can have long-term plans, but let us be certain of where we are going to not to continue right. to go in the direction we of have to let you go. To the promised land. We have to let you go very soon, but I think that one of the things we would like to ask you before you run off is the issue of um, um, workers' welfare. Mm -hmm. Because anytime we hear labor, it's always issues of um, uh, governors, of um, a minimum wage, mm -hmm. or issues of pump price. Amen. But you have always repeatedly told yeah. us issues where we have companies in Nigeria, foreign companies that treat our people in Terribly. the most horrible, horrible ways. In the, uh, we have issues of staff casualty and all that. So uh, as a Labour president, sir, could you tell us what you're doing also to protect the workers? The Nigeria, in the aside from sector. the issues of the minimum wage, how are you protecting our, us, especially on our rights with well, companies are to that are not obeying companies. the law of the land? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Possibly also is out of ignorance. In all the sectors, we have unions. In the oil and gas, I know how Nupek and Pengerson have tried to force casualization to a standstill. And now they have a working document with the employers. <coughs> Same with all other sectors. The one we are working on now is the banking sector. Because the employers have refused even to constitute the negotiating platform. Of which I remembered at a point when the Access Bank went to lay, off, lay down about 60% of their workers. And have turned the workers into uh, casuals. The CBN uh, monitoring uh, committee had to intervene. We said that you can't do this at this point in time. So we are monitoring and we have responded. I've, been, I've led many, many actions. In fact, October every year is a day we list those companies and we engage them. But don't forget what our unions are doing in all the sectors of the economy. The food union, all the in the construction union, you have unions, they are fighting this <coughs> tooth and nail. So basically what we are doing is to complement the effort that they are doing. And we have data. So if you want, we can share all those data with you on the engagement so we, we have done, we especially on decent work. Part of the agenda of ILO, and part of the agenda of the Sustainable Development Goals is Goal 8, about decent work, which is important. Decent work means workers must work in dignity. They must have fair wages. What is decent work? Is to have fair wages, fair working hours, issues of occupational health and safety. They should have a retirement benefit for social security government. This is decent work. Any work where you are working, you don't have this. It's not decent. Okay, we understand we this. What are you doing, sir? It's so able to have decent work. And this is this has been our preoccupation. All right, go ahead. So then. we understand all that you've said, sir. But what are you doing to expand Hello? your your your, we can hear you. your supervisory role to capture more companies? Because we are talking about factories. We're talking about, you know, workers in companies that have high yes, fences. We capture companies that are unionized. Wait. See, see, the first role of every worker is to belong to a trade union of his choice. This is a fundamental right globally. And which is Accommodated in our constitution, section 40, is the right of so every the worker doesn't allow to belong to a trade union for the purpose of protecting his right and interests. Mm. And therefore, it's where they don't mm. allow mm. such mm. will be there physically to ensure that this constitutional mm. provision, mm. which is also in line with ILO Convention 87, about the right of a worker to form union, is actually respected and exercised. And we have had many profound judgments from the National Industrial Court to say that no, no mm. employer mm. shall deny a worker the right to belong to a trade union of his choice. That they are made to wave point. it uh, uh, on their contracts. You cannot actually sir. try to get yes, isolation. Where they are made to wave it on their contracts before coming... Yes. Hello? What if? Where they are made to wave that right. It's not possible. It's illegal. Uh, Please, so what are you doing? But it happens. To, to, to a constitutional enforce. provision. See, there is difference between a constitutional provision and a contract provision. Mm -hmm. Once that is brought to our notice, we have followed it up to the latter. Mm -hmm. okay. So first, they should realize notice. that it's a constitutional mm -hmm. provision. To allow workers to belong to trade unions. No contract can set aside a constitutional provision. Mm -hmm. The constitutional provision is more superior 
is also contained in our labor laws. Mm -hmm. So I think it's about ignorance, and workers are free to contact so the unions that are operating in their respective industries right. and to report such companies. Okay. And we'll be ready to go ahead right. to make sure that they are unionized. Thank and you their so much, sir. Protected. Unfortunately, we have to wrap up at this time. Thank you so much. We enjoyed the session with you. I will be calling you back soon because definitely there will be updates on the issue of minimum wage. But mm -hmm. thank you. We'll be speaking with the National President of the Nigeria Labor Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us. Thank you, sir. Let's go on a break. When we come back, we'll move on to other topics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. to stay with us so recently um, there was a bill that was being um, debated in the House concerning the casualization of workers and the <coughs> Senator in charge of this will be joining us in a, in a moment but before we speak to him I'd like to hear your own uh, summation on what um, um, the Labour leader said earlier especially he, he touched on quite a bit of things he touched mm -hmm. on casualization, he touched on the pump price, he touched on uh, the issue of the minimum wage um, and he kept saying that the issue is political will, and we've heard this before. But the governors have engaged labor over and over and over, and they keep saying, I cannot afford this negotiation. I mean, it's important for us to even mention the states that, um, if, I can, if you can give me a minute to mention the states, we had Imo, we had, um, um, we had Quara, we had Ikiti, we had Oshun, we had Open State, and Zamfara, Gombe, Rivers, and, and uh, Imo. I think I said that already. So, Mariah, there, was, there was something I wanted. Um, the our last guest to mention and it's something when we speak we speak from emotion we just you know they should be able to do it it's political will but if you don't give us facts and figures based on da like data to prove your point we can't assume the governors have said they cannot afford it if you want to tell the governors they can afford it then give us the numbers mm -hmm. how much was how much was their allocation in the past three months what what did they say they've done because we have a right to question them mm -hmm. you have a right to ask them there's a freedom of information bill that is passed into law so the state chapter of labor could ask the governor on what they spent the last month budget on mm. and they have a right to demand it and then they now come from an informed yes. position putting the data out there you got five billion you did you, your state gov what we should earn is three billion why can't you pay us three billion so, so you are working with facts but let me from that for, point for labor quickly okay. because yeah. he mentioned it but just because he didn't break it down maybe yes, that's why numbers. He, he mentioned that we're aware of what comes in mm -hmm. he mentioned that we're aware of allocation we're aware of even security votes and how it is dispersed. Yeah. This is about political will. And I want to say that as long as government continues to pay lawmakers, continues to pay, pay certain political appointees higher, mm -hmm. Labour will continue to have these issues with yes. them. Until we see this hardship spread across board. Let everybody get suffering always, together. Yes, now. You know, you ask us to tighten our belt, but the belt is loose. You're you know, very loose on you. In fact, it's rope that they put third belt so that it can be... I just said by side. Yeah. Uh -huh. so, but know, he, but, he, but what, what he, he mentioned that Borinu is paying. And I'm wondering to myself, okay, if Borinu is paying, according to Borinu, they, 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 they have, um, he, he has able to save two months extra salaries. Mm. The point is that, so what, what is development, the development are we yeah. doing in Borinu? Yeah. Yeah. Is that just yeah, collecting on the government and paying salaries? Is that what you're supposed to be doing? So is it a good comparison? To say, why is it not paying if Borinu is paying? You know, it's something that is paying. What you're saying is that. Because we are borrowing to pay. As it is now, over 80% of our budget is going to borrowed. Service. So yeah. to, it's used for uh, loans and servicing of loans. But Nima, what Mariah raised is huge. I have, I, I, have to, I have to go on a break because our oh. guest is here now. I'm told oh. our guest is here. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we have with us Senator Abiodun Ulujimi. Good morning, madam. Yeah, good morning. Man. Good to have you on the show. So we heard that you were one of the senators prohibiting the casualization bill. Uh, could you tell us exactly what this bill is about and why it was important for you to, um, to vote against it? Well, the truth is very simple. Casualization is uh, very bad for our economy, very bad for the psyche of the young people, and very, very demoralizing. The reason why it is happening is the fact that the system fails the young people. The system fails in the simple way. Jobs are not created, 
constantly because a system that does not uh, envision creation of employment for the teeny young people who will come is not a functional system. And uh, this is the reason why casualization has taken real uh, hold on our system. You find out that banks just take our girls and they don't really uh, train them for anything other than to go and bring their photos. And the deposits are no longer available. The TSA has taken every fund away. And now that everything is centralized, where are the funds going to come from? But then they are threatening if they don't bring the money, the deposits, their economy will be stopped. Meanwhile, they are not being paid proper wages. They are paid uh, pieces just so that the business can move on. Right. Yes, we understand that um, private businesses need to try. But then, take the number you can on proper uh, salary. And then, if you make casual, then look for people with lower uh, uh, grades that can fit the money you are paying. Right. Paying uh, a graduate 35000 is pitch I mean, right. OK. So my, I know that uh, because of the capitalist economy that we run, where most um, organizations and companies want to minimize their cost and maximize profit, we end up having a lot of our graduates used as casual workers mm -hmm. to the detriment to their own detriment. Mm -hmm. Now, and I know that most um, of the organizations have work hand in hand with the government that is supposed to be protecting us. They look the other way because they go for um, uh, investigations and they know what is happening, but then somehow along the line, they just face just pretend like they do not understand what is happening to our graduates. Now, when this bill finally gets into law, what is the guarantee that it will be followed to the latter to ensure that these graduates are paid what they are due? Well, the truth is, uh, that's the real reason for the bill itself. As soon as it comes into uh, operation, people will be penalized. <laughs> it is it is about penalizing businesses for casualizing workers. Okay. And so I believe it will be tested. The major problem in our country is not the uh, death of laws. We have laws. Our problem is our people are so laid back, so reticent, they do not try out the laws. Nobody has gone to court to challenge any, any of our laws before. Everybody is afraid. The believe government will not allow it work. But you see, it's in testing it that we can make it stronger. When you test it and we see the pitfall, then we can make it better. But uh, I believe that with this casualization, some people who are very intelligent, especially our children who are coming up now, will test it. And once it is tested, nobody will go back on it again. Right. Mm. So this, this, I thought, was about the issue of sexualization within certain industries, particularly the banking industry. There should be a, 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 an association or something to guide such issues rather than have a law address it, or don't you think? Well, the banks themselves should be charitable enough to know that doing this to young people who are coming out and thinking of the future and looking at our country, uh, it, it, that doing this to them is not the best. They themselves should have been able to find a middle course whereby these people could be paid living wages. When you pay living wages, well, yes, you won't make enough profit, but then, you will also know that you are building a nation because it's about tomorrow. It's not about today. And the banks themselves should start talking. That is what we are urging our banking and uh, insurance uh, committee to do, to bring them together and look at how we can stop casualization and start work getting 
our people to work. And the deposits are not no longer available. They must think out of the box and see what else these young people can do. Now, you say somebody should go and bring deposit from me. I don't know where the deposit will come from. More than 20 of them have approached me and told me they are, they are likely to lose their jobs. I've been calling their bosses to bed. But then, I do not have any money to give them. Right. And these are many of the people I know. And so the banks themselves will start thinking out of the box. How else can they get deposits? What else can we do? TSA makes nonsense of everything. Who, so, where will you put money? Right. DBN, make sure that money is together. So Can the system is changing, this question, and man. so we must change with it. Okay, Ma, I want to quickly throw in this question. Um, you Speaking about casualization of workers, Nigeria has a large um, unemployment pool and a larger underemployed pool. So these are people that have a job, but in actual fact they don't have a job. This push, your, this law you're pushing for, this change the you're pushing for, what would it do for offices that employ people who work for years but are still regarded as contracts? No, it is part of... It is part of the entire bill. I believe um, by the time it comes into force, you can no longer uh, ask anybody to remain on the same level for too long because there are already rules. And like I told you, the laws are there. It's just that because our people, their intelligence is played upon, they also do, they are too afraid and too timid to, to ask questions and test the waters. You can't be in an establishment for 10 years on the same grade level without making the case for yourself. But uh, you see, our people won't talk. They will say, ah, that's the only thing I'm uh, using to look after my family. And they, do, they forget that uh, the company is making all the profits and uh, yes. running to the banks with yes. it. But if you ask, you probably might get a small raise because nobody wants you to get out there that you have been employed on one level for the last five, 10 years. Yes. And so by that, employers of labor right. will start looking at the labor force properly. Right. Because without looking at labor force properly, we can't get anything done. Unfortunately, we, we have to wrap up this get point, anything done. Thank you so much, Mark, for, for joining us this morning. We appreciate I you appreciate enlightening you. us. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes. That's all we can take on the show. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.